Hey, Venture Kids, it is great to see you this morning, and I can't wait to share our Bible story with you today. Hey, Pastor Steve. Oh, hey, Pascal. What do you have there? Well, I'm supposed to help my mom mop our little mouse house, but I really don't want to. It's too dirty, and it makes me sneeze, and it gets my whiskers dusty, and I just hate cleaning. Ah, uh, well, you know what, Pascal? That actually reminds me of today's Bible story. You see, Jesus' disciples didn't like cleaning either, and that's something they wanted to leave the other people to do. They thought they were too important to do a stinky job like that. But you know what? Jesus taught them a really valuable lesson. He taught them that serving is loving. In fact, that's our Bible point for today. Serving is loving. Well, it's going to take a really good story to convince me of that. <laughs> All right, Pascal. Well, let's jump in and see what happens in our story. It was Passover, the time when God's people remembered how God had rescued them from being slaves in Egypt. Every year they killed a lamb and ate it. The lamb died instead of us, they would say. But this Passover, God was getting ready for an even greater rescue. Jesus and his friends were having the Passover meal together in an upstairs room. But Jesus' friends were arguing. What about? They were arguing about stinky feet. Stinky feet? Yes, that's right, stinky feet. Now the thing about feet back then was that people didn't wear shoes. They only wore sandals, which might not sound unusual, except that the streets in those days were dirty. And I don't just mean dusty dirty. I mean really stinky dirty. With all those cows and horses everywhere, you can imagine the stuff on the street that ended up on their feet. So anyway, someone had to wash away the dirt, and that was a dreadful job. Who on earth would ever dream of volunteering to do it? Only the lowliest servant. I'm not the servant, Peter said. Nor am I, Matthew said. Quietly, Jesus got up from the table, took off his robe, picked up a basin of water, knelt down, and began to wash his friend's feet. You can't, Peter said. He didn't understand about Jesus being the servant king. If you don't let me wash away the dirt, Jesus said, you can't be close to me. Jesus knew that what people needed most was to be clean on the inside. All of the dirt on their feet was nothing compared to the sin inside their hearts. Then wash me, Lord, Peter said, tears filling his eyes. All of me. One by one, Jesus washed everyone's feet. I am doing this because I love you, Jesus exclaimed. Do this for each other. What is cooler than a talking bird? A spelling bee. That there was funny. What did the glove say to the baseball? Catch you later. <laughs> Made you laugh. What time is it when your clock strikes 13? Time to get a new clock. <laughs> a word out. Peace. Then wash me, Lord, Peter said, tears filling his eyes. All of me. One by one, Jesus washed everyone's feet. I am doing this because I love you, Jesus exclaimed. Do this for each other. Now, one of Jesus' friends had made a bad plan. No one else knew what the bad plan was, but Jesus knew, and so did Judas. Judas was going to help the leaders capture Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. Go on, Judas, Jesus said. And Judas got up from the meal, left the room, and walked out into the night. Then Jesus picked up some bread and broke it. He gave it to his friends. He picked up a cup of wine and thanked God for it. He poured it out and shared it. My body is like this bread. It will break, Jesus told them. This cup of wine is like my blood. It will pour out. 
but this is how God will rescue the whole world. My life will break, and God's broken world will mend. My heart will tear apart, and your hearts will heal. Just as the Passover lamb died, so now I will die instead of you. My blood will wash away all of your sins, and you will be clean on the inside in your hearts. So whenever you eat and drink, remember, Jesus said, I've rescued you. So Jesus knew it was nearly time for him to leave the world and go back to God. I won't be with you long, he said. You are going to be very sad, but God's helper will come. And then you'll be filled up with a forever happiness that won't ever leave. So don't be afraid. You are my friends, and I love you. Then they sang their favorite song and walked up to their favorite place, an olive garden. And that's our story. Oh, I get it now. If Jesus was willing to wash his disciples' stinky feet to show them how to love others, then I can help my mom with the chores to show her that I love her. That's right, Pascal. In fact, that's our Bible point for today. Serving is loving. And I think that's a great way for you to show your mom that you love her. There are all kinds of ways that we can serve others to show God's love. Hey, kids. Can you think of some other ways that you can show God's love by serving others? Go ahead, shout them out. What are your ideas? Those are some great ideas, Adventure Kids. Have an awesome week. Adventure Kids, this is the part of the show where you send in your questions to me, Jake, and I answer them. So let me grab my mailbag. <laughs> Hi Jake, how was the Bible made? From Benjamin. That is an awesome question. The Bible is made up of 66 books that were written by 40 different people over a period of 1,500 years. And every book that is in the Bible is inspired by God. That means that even though each book was written by a human, like Paul or Matthew, God inspired them by putting thoughts in their mind as they wrote the book. Then a group of really smart people got together and decided which of these books should be included in the Bible. They called this the canon of scripture. Not canon, like on a pirate ship, but canon in this case means something like a measuring stick. They wanted to measure each book against the list of rules, kind of like a checklist, to make sure it reflected the truth of God's message and that it was inspired by God. And all the books in the Bible passed that test. Awesome question. Hi Jake, how many cartwheels can you do in one minute? From Kaylee. I don't know, but let's find out. Since I'm not really good at cartwheels, we'll do 30 seconds. Here we go. I don't know if that was pretty, but there you go. So remember, if you have questions for me, Jake, just go to the website, takeawaywithjake.com, and I'll be happy to answer your questions right here on the show.